So you said you have a long career going back, what, 2001? Um, it's a long time. What stands yeah. out in your mind the most on a bicycle? Um, gosh, I mean, it's been a great career. There's a lot. Um, biggest thing early on was doing the Dauphiné with Mercury. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just Neo Pro doing Dauphiné with Pavel Tonkov in the leader's jersey. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> Doesn't get much better than that. Um, Living the dream. Yeah, and then, um, you know, winning time trial in Fitchburg um, and doing re really well at Boats in 2002 um, kind of proved for myself that I had what it what it took to be that team leader as well. Um, and then, uh, let's see, big result was um, King High Lake with Navigators was amazing, you know, winning a big international mm -hmm. stage race with some of the best guys in the world. Um, that, was, that was huge. So that'd be that'd be my biggest was uh, was King, King High Lake. Do you have to when you when you look back, is it hard to comprehend the life you've been able to live? I mean, it's guys guys like me. Yeah, you look at guys like you, and it's I mean, I don't awesome. have any I mean, genetic ability. It's a dream. No, I have no. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fully aware. I'm very lucky. I mean, it's been a lot of hard work, but no, I absolutely have. You know, I'm, I'm lucky. I have some some physical talent and good work, work ethic for my parents and just, um, you know, I've worked really hard to get where I am. But geez, I mean, I've traveled all over the world, friends everywhere, you know, I've lived all over the place, raced everywhere and had success everywhere, so. How old were you when you thought you might have what it takes? To, um, to... When I was 15. <laughs> wow. So when did you first When I was 15, when I, I start, first started riding when I was 15 and knew immediately that I came out the gate when This is what I want to do, <laughs> yeah. You know, last year was, you know, some hard times for us and we really, you know, it could have gone one of two ways, and, and we all just came together as a, as a bunch and said, all right, like, we are going to do the best thing that we can for each other, and, and we're going to win a lot of races, so next year, you know, we can have the sponsorship that we need, and, you know, let's, you know make this happen, make our sacrifices, and just make it happen, so. I'm going to tell you, from the outsider perspective, it was pretty impressive, to, I mean, to watch what happened after t uh, Tour of California. Mm -hmm. One guy fin fin finishes, and pretty much it seemed like everyone had pretty much written you guys off and then the results just came flying mm -hmm. and i don't know if that would be called an under, underdog status mm -hmm. but i mean i looked at it, it was like wow yeah. you know these guys came out and and any mm -hmm. any activity people had them and they just blew right past past mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. so when you talk about that family feel mm -hmm. um does that improve communication within the when you guys race the, the closeness of the team yeah absolutely like there's never any any question of um you know, selling out for your teammate. Like, if Charles comes up to me and says, "Look, I'm flying today," like, like, okay, that's it. I'm I'm riding for Charles. Like, no questions. So I think that kind of mentality where, you know, we're just all for one, and you know, everyone's nobody's shy about putting their hand up and saying, "Like, look, like if Alessandro Bazzana says, guys, you know, I'm, I've got really good legs," then we work for Bazzana. So you know, I think that the management's done, a, you know, really good job of empowering us as as riders to make those decisions as well on the fly. So egos, so egos are in check. Yep, egos are in check. Yeah. It's, that it's seems a like good, a big problem a in a lot of other teams. Yeah. Egos are. Yep. No, you know, it's, it's a really good thing. In a team like this, especially this year, I mean, it could be disastrous. It's not going to be, but like we have so many good guys. Like when you look at our sprint squad, I mean, there's six, seven guys who on any other team they'd be the guy. Right. And now you know they're going to be, you know, four, they're they're going to be the lead out guy with two k to go. For for whoever it is on that day. I mean, you have to admit. I mean, you, like that. I, I maybe you're still qualified as an underdog status. I don't. I don't know. I'm not. I don't, I don't predict those kinds of things. But you guys on on, on your roster is phenomenal. I mean, yeah. you guys have a great team going super, into 2010. Super deep. And I think it's going to catch a lot of people by by mm -hmm. surprise. I think that and <clears throat> so that leads me to my next question: Is what are your pers personal goals and and what would you consider a successful season for Phil? Um, personally, well, first off, with the team, we're going to win the NRC. Like, no question. We're going to win the NRC. My nice goal. <laughs> so, personally, my ambitions, um, my first goal is Redlands. Um, I really want, you know, one of us to win Redlands. I'd love it to be me. Um, I'm going to do everything I can to show up at Redlands ready to win. And then from there, it's, it's nearly a month to Gila. So... Drop a little weight, build a little form, Gila, big objective, and then from there, hopefully it's two weeks to Tour of California. Um, you know, I, I think we deserve a start at California. I think so. Okay. I think I think we can uh, we can surprise a lot of people there. I've heard you say that your favorite race is Tour of California. Oh, 
Why is that? I love it because it's. I mean, it's the biggest showcase for our sport in in America right now. I mean, Big Bear is going to be ridiculous. Yeah, I can't that. Wait, it's going to Big Bear. There's going to be a half million people up on Big Bear. Uh-huh. It's, it's going to be awesome. So, um, no, it's just such a such a great venue. And now that the sun's going to be out, it's going to be even better. I mean, we're fortunate though in America. We have awesome racing. We do. We're, we really do. I mean, Utah is an awesome race. Redlands is great. Gila. I love Gila. Yeah. Dude, Gila is fantastic. Yeah, it's awesome. Cycling is really, I mean, as a sport, it's grown so much in the last 10 years in America. And it's becoming a lot more ingrained in the corporate culture of America. And I really think it is going to be here to stay. Yeah. What gets you up every morning and gets you out there? I get paid to ride a bike. <laughs> I love riding my bike. I mean, bottom line, like, I love to ride my bike. I love going fast on my bike. Um, I love traveling with these guys all year. And my wife comes to pretty much every race. Like, she loves coming to the races. So, right now, you know, I get to ride my bike and live in Boulder. And I'm just pretty happy. Definitely fortunate. What do you tell the, the 16, 17, 18 year old that's you know, looking for a U23 gig and... Work you know. your ass off. <laughs> you just have to suffer. Nothing's, I think, in, in, in general, kind of the younger generation today is used to having everything just happen. It just kind of falls in the lab form. Cycling, there's no gifts. You have to work hard, hard for everything. You have to work harder than the next time. You have to be smart about it as well. So you have to be trained harder and smarter mm-hmm. and just be more efficient with everything you do. Phil, thanks for your time. We uh, expect to, we look forward to seeing you on the podium. Yeah, no, it's going to be a good year.